You are officially the worst reviewer of all time. You're your parents' disappointment. He cooked and gave us food poisoning. Where do these obnoxious reviewers keep popping up from? And that's you, you're only a YouTuber. And not even no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't know it got so bad. Here I thought I was giving genuine reviews on the music I love, but turns out, I'm just making a bunch of enemies. Good, catch me clapping like the Joker. I'm absolutely thriving off your anger. That's just not true, I'm kidding. I just try to be pretty blunt and honest with my reviews, positive or negative. The meaning though, it, it gets lost in translation, mostly because of the medium I relay my reviews in, which are the YouTube shorts or TikToks. Reviewing one or two hour long albums in 60 seconds, um, it's kind of hard. Oh, but Buzz, stop being lazy. Just make some full length reviews. I hear you, I do. But like seeing how most of my long form videos barely crack 10K views, I feel like I wouldn't get my point across too well even in long form. But seeing how my channel started really growing about a year ago, I decided to look back into a specific thing that I'm known for. My apparent propensity to have bad takes. And this is all according to you, my loyal viewers and commenters. I specifically picked the three most common complaints that I get. And maybe, just maybe, by the end of this video, we can reach a common ground. My only request before we get started is be a little bit open-minded. Ah yes, I get an IG DM about this one about every three days. Which is interesting because this take comes from nowhere near one of my biggest videos. In quick summary, this video belongs to a series that you guys coined, Is It, it the, the Best, best one? one? It's where I cover an album and then talk about the most popular song, the best one, the worst one, and the most underrated one. Yep, that's right, what a novel idea, pitchfork move aside. Although the format and reviewing Igor itself wasn't the main issue. The problem lies in a certain string of words that I tend to use in these videos we can all agree yeah definitely such a reasonable thing to say when the topic is an objective one like music but the reason i say this term is because it actually stems from the very first video in this series my review of kanye's my beautiful dark twisted fantasy we can all agree that blame game is the worst song on the album amazing voice work there very engaging but the way i said it there it was because i genuinely did think we all agreed that blame game sucks i mean it's melodramatic the lyrics or whatever the chris rock part is genuinely unforgivable but anyway, the video did pretty well. It got about a quarter million views on TikTok. So I just continued with the series. But a large portion of the comments were talking about my pick for the worst song, as well as the we can all agree tag. So naturally, as someone trying to grow a page, I committed to keeping this line in most of the videos, but genuinely dishing out full, honest opinions on the songs that I was picking out from the albums. It's like mini clickbait, you know, but you've already clicked on the video. So I guess retention bait. All right, enough backstory. You're probably wondering how does this even relate to the take that Igor's second worst song is New Magic Wand. It's because of a combination of what I've just explained and a genuine hot take that I believe in to this day. Let's break it down. At the time this little short was made, uh, Igor was definitely my favorite Tyler album. I love the sonics and the songwriting, the vulnerability that's coming off from a man that's usually so confident. And as a full front to back listen through, it's tragic. It's really captivating. It's genuinely fantastic, but Picking it apart song by song, it really uncovers the flaws of the album for me. And I remember scripting this video and it was a real tough pick, but I Don't Love You Anymore came out as the worst song, but it was genuinely a toss up between that and New Magic Wand. I'm pretty sure even Tyler himself said that that was his best song. And I get it. It lands at the approximate climax of the album, Tyler lashing out angrily against this person that he's desperately in love with. Each part of the song building up to this explosive final verse that really ends off the song in this like, what the fuck just happened kind of feeling. And although I recognize all of this, it still doesn't really land for me. The production is the main culprit in my opinion. Something about those distorted bass synths combined with Tyler's pitched up vocals and those damn sampled hi-hats. It sounds like someone's just rattling the silverware drawer. It always came off as grating rather than emotional or energetic for me. So nowadays it's a firm skip. Concluding this part of the video, I know that New Magic Wand is an essential part of Igor, but I never want to listen to it outside of a full listen through of the album. But the Grammys live version though goes absolutely insane. <laughs> Moving on to the next thing I get ripped apart for. Uh, yeah. This take might have been affected by some 
recent developments, if you know what I mean. But now that I think about it in this moment, I still revisit Vultures 1 and 2 more frequently than I ever have 808s. But for the sake of this video, let's say I genuinely do think 808s is Kanye's worst album. Yes, even below Jesus is King. But there's also a quick backstory to this one. It also refers back to the aforementioned series and where I was at the time. I was preparing for the first surgery in a series of surgeries I'm in the middle of doing, and I was running out of albums I feel strongly about for this series. So I hosted a straw poll to have people decide what's next with both 808s and jesus is king being at the top honestly two albums i never really listened to but i appreciate for different reasons there are two kanye albums that actually have a really strong cohesive narrative or theme and their track lists are tied together pretty well by these themes but in terms of songs themselves um not that memorable for me i then ranked the track lists made a pros and cons list for each album and jesus is king edged 808s that sounds weird prefacing my thoughts on 808s i understand it's influential I like this comment on the album of the year page when you get sad and redefine modern pop music <laughs> but just like original tools cavemen used or the original bananas people cultivated they don't really hold a candle to like the modern stuff we have shit i could probably shove that one down my here's a screenshot of the songs i have saved on 808s versus jesus is king turns out it's really not that close now would i place vultures one or two under 808s eh. I mean, despite both of these albums having a lot of drawbacks, they both contain more songs that I genuinely want to hear from Kanye. I guess I revisit them more because of simply the hip hop aspect of those songs or the rap subcategory they belong in. Like is Field Trip one of Kanye's best songs? No, but does it bang? Yes. Therefore, the scores might reflect it differently, but I don't ever go back to 808s ever. Now for the take that I consider the most important that I really need to talk about. A couple of months ago, I started posting on my album of the year page. Rate your music, guys. Relax. Slow down. Breathe. It'll be okay. And if you notice something on my rating distribution, there are no albums ranked 100 out of 100. Yes, even with all these albums being considered 90s, none hit the 100 mark. And people often ask me about this. And the truth is, I don't believe in perfection. And that's not just in music, that goes for life in general. I think, as a very flawed person myself, that the beauty in life lies in the flaws that we kind of have to work out it's what keeps us going improving and growing the reason i'm hustling with this youtube thing is because i don't want to flaw in my bank account <laughs> the reason i changed my diet and lost nearly 20 pounds is because i saw a flaw in my own appearance but that's the thing even with these changes there will always be other flaws to fix so when i listen to an album that i consider nearly perfect such as brock hampton's roadrunner even with zero skips a full listen every single time i put it on each time there are some small flaws i notice in some of the verses the lyrics the song songwriting, whatever it is. Sometimes I notice the more, sometimes less, but it's always there. And maybe that says a lot about me as a person. I don't really consider myself a nitpicker or a perfectionist by any means. I mean, look at this fucking facial hair. It's just that holding something to this perfect standard is so unrealistic, especially in forms of art like music, which are subjective to begin with. And that's it, I guess. Those are some of my worst takes imaginable that I see you guys comment on all the time. I don't want people to think that I got to that point by having like a rage bait channel. I hope you guys understand how much the music I talk about means to me. And even if I say something outlandish like logic is in the big four, there's always an explanation in the video. You just gotta listen. I hope you still find a reason to stick around and watch, even if you're hating on me. <laughs> Thanks for watching. What's the buzz is out.